Excuse me, but where in the world are you taking me? Grab a blanket, turn off your lights, for dangerous taxi drivers. My grandmother threw herself out of a taxi. This is a story my grandmother would tell me when she was trying to put fear of God in me. When she was about 28 to 30 years old, she went to a major city for a business meeting. I can't remember the specific city, but it was like New York with a huge amount of taxis and whatnot. She was supposed to meet someone at another destination and had the hotel call a taxi. When she went outside to wait, she saw a taxi already outside. She assumed it was hers and helped herself in. She didn't notice anything special about the taxi. She told the driver the address and off they went. For about 10 minutes, she didn't notice they were going a weird way. After 15 minutes, she started getting worried and asked the driver where they were going. At this point, they were out of the major city and she realized what kind of situation that she was in. She tried talking to the driver, but he never spoke a word to her. She noticed they were getting closer to a skeezy hotel, so she made a decision. She noticed he never locked the doors, probably thinking she wouldn't jump out of a moving car. He didn't know my grandmother was a badass motherfucker who took care of five kids on her own and worked full time. She tucked her legs, opened the door, and rolled the fuck out. She ran as fast as she could and hid. She saw him go up and down the road a couple times, and eventually... leave. When he finally left, she walked down the road to another hotel. She walked in and asked to use her phone. They actually said no. Then she demanded, she demanded to use their fucking phone in the same voice she uses now to make sure I know she's serious. Yeah, they let her use the phone. She called whoever she was supposed to meet and told them where she was and to bring the police. They came, and as she filled out a report and left. The aftermath is that the police raided the hotel and found it to house kidnapped women who were forced to prostitute themselves. She told her friend that she wanted to cut the job short and go home, he told her, you're not that type of woman to let getting kidnapped mess with your life. So, she stayed in the same city she was kidnapped in and finished her work. I love her. Taxis aren't always your safest option to get home. Me and my sisters of which I have three, grew up in a smallish country town in rural Australia. As you could probably imagine, there was not a lot going on there and one by one, we jump shipped and moved to greener pastures. In this instance, bigger and more exciting cities. This story is not mine, it is my youngest sister's. When it came time for her to follow suit and move out, she followed the rest of us to Sydney. At the time the story takes place, she was 19 years old. At her first work Christmas party, not long after she'd arrived in town, she got slightly intoxicated and not knowing the city very well, opted to pay for a taxi in order to get home safely. She left the party, flagged one down, jumped in the front seat next to the driver advised her destination, and began making polite conversation. As she tells it, the driver was fine at first, but before too long he began turning the conversation to her looks and her job, telling her that she was gorgeous and asking if she did any modeling. She laughed it off and told him no. It was at this point that, while driving the taxi, he reached underneath her seat, pulled out a camera, and started taking her photo. His compliments grew increasingly cruder, and she asked him repeatedly to stop taking her picture before getting angry and yelling at him to stop the taxi and let her out, which he would not do. Thinking quickly, she looked ahead to see if there was any red lights coming up where he would have to stop the car. Luckily, there was one fast approaching. The driver slowed down gradually rather than driving to the lights and stopping. 
all the while continuing to take her photo. When he was finally moving slow enough that she felt she could exit the car without injuring herself, she opened the door and jumped out. He was moving slowly enough at this point that thankfully she was not injured. Drunk, scared, and lost, she sat in the gutter briefly to collect herself before finally coming to the realization that, as she had no clue where she was, she would have to get in another taxi in order to get home. Reluctantly, she flagged down another car this time, getting, getting in the back seat and once again advising her destination. The driver of the second car saw that she had been crying and was visibly shaken up and asked her what had happened and if she was alright. She explained the events. The second driver paused for a moment before informing her that the first driver had been taking her in the complete opposite direction of where she told him she needed to go. Attempts were made to find out who this guy was and report him. However, as my sister was drunk and new to the city, she was not able to provide enough specific information, like the location, the exact time, taxi company, description of the driver, etc. Since this incident, whenever she has no other option but to get a taxi home, the first thing she does after getting in the car is take a photo of the driver's license with her phone. It makes my skin crawl to think that the guy who did this is more than likely still driving taxis in Sydney, and that this is heralded as being the safest way to get home if you're a young woman, and it's late at night. Taxi Rapist I'm a 17-year-old female in the UK. This took place a few months ago at my grandfather's funeral, or at least the after party to it. Me, my cousin, and her friend were drinking, because that's what you do at a wake or whatever. I was 16 at the time, and I needed to go home at like half one in the morning, and I was completely shit-faced, so I called a taxi. I wasn't ready to walk home in the state I was in. After like 10 minutes, the taxi arrived. I quickly finished my drink, said goodbye to everyone there, and got in the taxi waiting outside. The taxi driver was pretty ordinary looking Pakistani or Indian guy with dark hair and glasses. I paid to go home, which cost it something along the lines of £4.50. I never said a word to him besides my destination. On the way, he asked a bunch of questions, like my age, why I was drinking out so late, and why I'm going home alone. I told him I was 18. I don't know why I did, maybe I wanted to feel older or something. I said that I was back from a funeral and wanted to dull the pain. I didn't answer the last question. He asked me if anyone was at home to open the door for me, or to see me to bed safely. Me thinking this dude was just a good Samaritan, wanting to know if I was safe. I just said that everyone was home was likely asleep, but it didn't matter because I was often a rebel and came in late and they knew that. In retrospect, I probably should have said there was someone at home waiting for me to return. Around halfway through the journey home, the driver drove past the turn he was meant to be taking. I told him and he said that this way was much quicker and he didn't want to waste my time. Wrong turn after wrong turn and he used the same excuse every time. This way is much quicker, don't worry about it. He went down an alley near a closed down theater and a car dealership which is also shut. I told him he must be confused because this is not near my house. The car stopped slowly and I was super confused. I asked what's wrong, and he put his arm around me. He told me he, he told me that he couldn't focus on the road because of how distracting I was. He then leaned in into a kiss, but I blocked him off with my hand and asked what he was doing. Maybe I gave him some mixed signals. Keeping one hand on my shoulder, he grabbed my leg. This is when I started getting serious creeper vibes. He then unzipped his trousers and presented himself to me. I went from thinking he was just a regular guy who's been receiving mixed signals to a phone-blown rapist in seconds. He began to feel me up, 
my chest and thighs. I honestly had no idea what to do at this point. Should I do what he wants, or should I try to escape? But if I don't, he'll probably kill me. I made a snap judgment and went along with it. I pretended it was all totally fine, that what he was doing wasn't rape, and that I wasn't underage. I started to feel him up too, and I kissed him a few times. And luckily before it could get anywhere else, he, he got a call. He told me that he needed to answer it, and that we had to do this some other time. I said okay, and he dropped me off at home. I haven't told anyone, and I don't plan on doing so. And I haven't called a single taxi since. I'm just glad it didn't go anywhere, because if it did, I could have been raped or killed. Whoever was on the other side of that phone call, I owe you my life. I called the police anonymously the next morning and gave them a description. No arrest has been made yet. Edit. Reminder to all, there's plenty of bad people out there. Don't assume they're not if there's some sort of public service. Just because they're a police officer, a fireman, or a taxi driver, anyone, anyone can be dangerous.